I've spent a lot of time talking about other, more interesting people, and what I've learned from that is that it's completely possible for me to be successful as a YouTuber and content creator. But I have to ask, is the road to that success a road I want to travel? It's easy to get tunnel vision and only see the goal at hand without realizing that the process it takes to get to that goal may very well be the opposite of what I wanted. I used to tell people that if you remember why you started working towards something and keep that goal in mind, the work itself will be rewarding in the fact that it will bring you closer and closer to that goal. I wasn't wrong, but the truth is that we don't live most of our lives in retirement. Success isn't just the outcome of all your work, success is being able to enjoy that work. And on YouTube, I've heard it argued that your content will be more enjoyable to audiences if you personally enjoy making it. I can't disagree. As cliche as it may be, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey it takes to get there. The journey I took over the last six years has taught me a lot about what I actually want out of my time on YouTube. Would I like to be successful? Well, yes, of course. But that takes a backseat to actually having fun while I make these videos. So after the 11 documentaries on YouTubers I've made, I can factually say that it's the most successful series on this channel, although it's my least favorite series to create. This is the dilemma I was faced with after having created them. Do I continue down the path of success doing something that I don't enjoy anymore, or do I create passion projects that will only be seen by a few people? Throughout my time on YouTube, the only reason people have known who I am is because of other YouTubers than myself. Long before I was making documentaries, and long before I even started the Luex channel, I used to play video games on an old gaming channel of mine. Most of the reason people knew who I was back then is because I was a very large fan of the YouTuber Kabanamurni456. I would comment on all of his videos, made a fan channel based on him, made a Five Nights at Freddy's fan game about him, and took far too much inspiration from him in my own videos. Needless to say, I became fairly well known in his community of fans. While I had few people stick around my channel out of interest, I could never hold a large number of people watching my content at once. As I grew older, my interest in Kobana Money 456 and video games shrank by the day. By the time I had decided to move to a new channel, I had almost entirely lost the connection that I once had with that community. To be honest, it was kind of nice. I had been doing the same thing for more than three years at that point, and to have officially moved away from gaming felt like a great breath of fresh air. While I don't think I would ever go back to the way things were, I certainly miss it at times. It's nostalgic. The amount of time I dedicated to Kobana Money 456 felt bittersweet. I would have liked to spend my time on something more productive, but at the same time, I enjoyed it. Quite a bit, actually. I was feeling the same way back in the summer of 2017, which is why I decided to dedicate one last project to him and that community. The Kabana Money 456 documentation. This felt to me as a big turning point. It was my last hurrah to that community and to all the fans I was leaving behind. It was the final goodbye to who had been, up until that point, my favorite YouTuber. The amount of impact he had on my life can't be overstated, but it was time for me to move on to something new. This documentary served two purposes, to say goodbye to who I once was and say hello to who I would now be. Because the Kabanamani 456 documentation, released on June 4th, 2017, was my very first documentary. I distinctly remember thinking to myself, what a better way to start this new documentary series than to make my first one on the guy who started my whole journey online. I couldn't have picked anyone better, and I barely needed to do any research because of the amount of information I already knew about him. Seeing many of the people I had come to know because of Kobana Money 456 in the comments of that video, celebrating a YouTuber we all cherished, is truly a special experience. Even after he quit YouTube, people still come to the video reminiscing on the memories they had of watching him. I couldn't have asked for a better reaction, and getting a reaction that meant so much to me is part of what motivated me to make more documentaries. But arguably more valuable to me than the reaction from his fans is the reaction of Kobanamarni456 himself. While he didn't give me any public attention, he did message me privately on Twitter. 
that was one of the most special moments of my life because I felt like I grew up in a way. Not because I was doing well for myself or anything, but because I was able to just talk to him. Not as just a fan, but as someone who respected his work. These days, I wish I could go back and read what we said, but sadly his Twitter is deactivated. From there, I knew for sure what direction I wanted my channel to head in. The next step was to figure out who I could possibly make documentaries on next. I made a list and got working. The Mama Max documentation was released on June 17th, 2017, and was my second documentary in the series. This documentary would be equally important to me in a lot of ways. I didn't actually have any deep connections with Mama Max's community, but I felt like I did. I felt like I was part of a family. His content at that point was easily my favorite to watch, and the feeling of relatability and connection he created was so strong that he quickly became my favorite YouTuber. I wanted to continue the series strong, so I gave it my best shot. I wanted my documentaries to be as personal to me as I could let them be. From the start, I made a rule to myself that I wouldn't create documentaries on people I wasn't personally invested in. I felt as though my time would be wasted if I were to spend it on someone who was unimportant to me. So to see that Max also saw the documentary I made on him was quite the surprise. I remember being out of town when I received the notification from a dear friend. You have a surprise waiting in your comments. At this point, everything I had done with the series was exactly what I had hoped for. But it would be a very long time before I ever captured how special those first two documentaries would be to me. Even though things went very smooth for quite a long time, I didn't have the same passion for them as I did with the first two. But I continued with another. I made the Colossal is Crazy documentation on July 1st, 2017. To my delight, he too saw the video. It was three for three. Every documentary I made up until that point had been seen by the people I made them on. I guess I don't know why I expected to get the same reaction, because it was by this point I had stopped making them out of a true love and passion for the creator. I was making them because I thought it would get a positive reaction out of my audience and the person I was making it on. For the next few months, I would upload a new documentary every other week. After the Colossal is Crazy documentation, I continued with one on Keemstar, followed by I Hate Everything, H3H3 Productions, Pyrocynical, and then Your Movie Sucks. And I don't have anything special to say about them. They all followed the same formula of research, scripting, voiceover, and even editing. My editing at that point had become almost unbearably boring to work on. The reason for such was because I used the same templates and format. I was trying to stick with a recognizable theme, but that ultimately failed. I was making videos for the sake of making them. When I made the documentary on Your Movie Sucks, I had pretty much given up on the idea that the YouTubers I was making these documentaries on would even see my videos. Because at that point, I had made four separate documentaries that had gone unseen. Which made it all the more surprising when Your Movie Sucks actually commented on my documentary. A thanks. Needless to say, I appreciated it for what it was. But I wouldn't make another documentary for the next three months. I was tired of the formula. I couldn't keep making the same video over and over again with a different content creator each time. I didn't want to quit making documentaries, but I did want to make a change. I wasn't going to simply pick another YouTuber that I was subscribed to. I was going to find someone that meant something to me and that I could be passionate about. It took longer than usual, but it was worth it. Because on January 13th, 2018, I uploaded the Linino documentation. At that point, the longest documentary I ever made was my first, coming in at 14 minutes. The Limino documentation would set a new standard. At 18 minutes long, I put my all into this video. To this day, it stands as one of my proudest works. It was the next big turning point for my channel. I stopped caring how long it would take to make these documentaries. I would make them complete, and I wouldn't hold back. The biggest thing the video did for me personally was allow me to have freedom in what I wanted to do with the editing. I didn't stick with my usual formula, and I did whatever I wanted. It all sparked from the idea of attempting to replicate Limino's style of editing for that specific video, which I did. Not only that, but it allowed me to drop the formula for all of my future videos. I had fun. I thoroughly enjoyed making that video. And for the first time in a long time, I was rewarded greatly. To this day, it's my most successful video for multiple reasons. Limino took attention to the video, commenting on it and sharing it on his Twitter. What a rush. All the work I put into that video paid off greatly. 
I hadn't put so much effort into any other video in my life, and to have it generate the reaction that it did brought me back to when I first started the series. At this point, the pattern was clear. When I personally enjoyed making documentaries, I would always see more success. There was passion there, and whether my viewers knew it or not, it was affecting how people saw my videos. Figuring out how I wanted to continue the series was easier than I thought it would be. I decided to challenge myself and create a documentary on someone people wish they knew more about. On February 18th, 2018, I released the iDubs TV documentation. At 26 minutes long, I had confidently covered his entire online career. The video wasn't perfect, not by any means, but what I had done with the research, editing, and overall presentation of the video was more than I had ever done before. At this point, each time I released a documentary, I wouldn't accept anything less than the previous one I created. All I wanted to do was beat myself at my own game. After the iDubs documentary, I needed a little time off to focus on a few projects other than documentaries. I knew what I wanted to do next, but I also knew that it was going to take up an extraordinarily large amount of time. After a month of creating my regular videos, I got to work. It wouldn't be until seven months after the iDubs documentation that I finally released the Vsauce documentary. There aren't very many things in my life that I can say I've put an equal amount of work into. In the time before the release of the Vsauce documentary, I released six regular videos to hold my audience's attention. It took me an entire month to finish the notes for this documentary, but once I started working on the script, there was no turning back. After I uploaded a video about me being on the internet for five years, I went cold for an entire three months. In those five years that I had been online up until that point, I had never gone silent for more than two weeks. I remember sitting in my room for hours a day, working on writing the script and editing the video. I would stand up to stretch, get a drink maybe, and then get back to work. During the editing, I even had my room completely renovated, meaning I had to do all the work in the living room for an entire week. But I did it. After 51 pages of script, an entire day of narrating, and hundreds of hours of editing, I was able to put this project to rest. Adding that last image out of thousands, just to be able to push the publish button in my editing software, was one of the most satisfying moments of my life. Knowing that I could rest, knowing that I will soon get to see the culmination of the last six months of my life, was magical, to say the least. I remember pushing the publish button, just to sit back and stare at it for a good minute, then proceeding to call my friend to let them know that it was done. Lying on my bed, just being drained like nothing else. Despite all the emotions that were bubbling up that night, I wasn't done. Not actually, at least. I spent the next few days preparing everything before the inevitable release of the video. I got the video uploaded and added all the needed information, like credits and links in the description. I made a trailer teasing the release of the video. And then, ultimately, on September 15th, 2018, I was given the privilege of letting the public see all my work. At 1 hour and 24 minutes, I made a movie. A documentary about not just one, but three of my favorite content creators. And wow, the reaction I got was everything and more. Even though it's not my most successful video, the reaction I got from my audience made every minute of work worthwhile. Two out of three of the YouTubers featured in the documentary saw and supported the video. I was happy as could be. My work was done. I got the reaction I wanted and desperately needed a break. So I took one. I had accumulated quite a few ideas over the few months that I had worked on that documentary. So I put the ideas to use and started making more videos. Weeks go by, then months. Throughout that entire time, I subtly questioned what my next documentary was going to be on, but didn't put much effort into it. Every time I would bring myself to start working on a documentary, I could never continue. I was still tired from the last one I created. All I wanted to do was keep making my usual content and forget about the documentaries altogether. I knew that I couldn't make something as grand as the Vsauce documentary, and I wasn't about to try. The main problem holding me back was not knowing who I wanted to make it on. The only two content creators I had in mind were enough to make full-length documentaries on, but I wasn't about to do that again. Knowing how much effort and time was needed for these type of documentaries to be complete in my eyes was enough for me to hold myself back. 
I wasn't very nice to myself about it. I truly wanted to succeed on YouTube, and I knew that I could if I continued these documentaries. But I also knew that I wouldn't enjoy making them because of the few times that I had tried to. I didn't want to go back to the time when my documentaries were just a formula. Anything but that. As proud as I am of the Vsauce documentary, it burnt me out like no other video I have ever created. I still feel it to this day. Eventually, the new year rolled around. It's been more than a half a year since my last documentary, but a part of me changed after dedicating so much time of my life to it. Part of me realized that this isn't what I want to be doing with my time on YouTube. I want to share my ideas and my thoughts and my interests. Is it selfish? Yes, maybe. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the documentaries coming to an end. After everything I put into them, especially the first two and the last three, I think I accomplished everything I wanted out of them. I'm proud of them but I can't go back to them. I just don't enjoy them like I used to, especially when I enjoy making my usual content far more. I think it's time for me to find my own path, to become more than a compilation of the people around me. On this journey, the thing that has kept me going the most is you. I understand that people enjoy the series, and I'm glad they did, but whether I was making a documentary or one of my other videos, I have been blessed with a community of wonderful people watching and sharing my content. The documentary series would be nothing without you all. So thank you. Thanks for making that series everything that it is.